Hi, I'm Bob Welch, and this is a first look at a stress-strain diagram. A lot of important engineering information comes from stress-strain diagrams, so it's important to understand what they are and what they represent. As you might have guessed by the name, stress-strain diagrams illustrate the relationship between stress and strain. But what is stress, and what is strain? Stress is a force distributed across an area. Let's hang this 1,000-pound weight from a steel rod or two, and we'll have a look at stress. Now, depending on the size of the steel rod, we may have a lot or just a little stress. It all depends on how much cross-sectional area our rod has. Sparky has two rods here. The small rod is one quarter inch in diameter. That's about the same size as a pencil. The big rod is three inches in diameter. And that's about as big around as a baseball or a cricket ball. Now, we'll carefully hang the thousand pound weight from the quarter inch steel bar. It looks like it's stretching a little. Will it hold? Okay, it looks like it's going to hold. But that little bar is under a lot of stress. How much stress? I'm glad you asked. Now, stress is the force being applied divided by the cross-sectional area of the bar. The force is 1,000 pounds, and the area of the bar is just a tiny 0.049 square inches. And remember, we can find the area of a circular shape by multiplying pi times the radius squared. To find stress, we divide the 1,000 pound load by 0.049 square inches. And the result is about 20,408 pounds per square inch. Now that's a lot of stress, but this little bar could handle even more before breaking. Now, let's put the weight onto the three inch bar. Sparky is positioning the weight onto the bar, letting it hang. It doesn't seem to be stretching like the other bar. Now, let's see how much stress is being developed in the larger bar. We have the same 1,000 pounds, but this time the cross-sectional area is much greater. A three inch diameter bar has a cross-sectional area of about seven inches. Pi times 1.5 inch radius squared is very close to seven. The stress in the three inch bar is only about 143 pounds per square inch. Well, that's a whole lot less than the 20,408 pounds per square inch in the smaller bar. This big bar hardly feels anything and it didn't even stretch enough for us to see it. For the same force, more area means less stress. So you see, if we were designing a component to do a particular job, we would be very concerned about how much stress we were developing in that component. Now, let's talk about the stretching. We could see our bar stretch a little when it was under that 20,000 pounds per square inch of stress. When we talk about how much something stretches, it's important to talk about how long it was originally. When we stretch something, we can compare the change in length to the original length. The change in length divided by the original length is something called strain. We can talk about how stiff a material is by comparing how much stress it takes to strain the material a certain amount. Let's draw a picture of what happens when we pull really hard on a steel part. We won't talk about everything happening, but we'll hit the high points. Here we have a round piece of steel. We'll put two marks on here that are two inches apart. We'll use this length when we talk about the strain. The diameter of the part is 0.5 inches, and that means the cross-sectional area is 0.1963 square inches. We'll use this machine to measure how much force we apply to the part, and before we plot the measurement, we'll divide the force by the cross-sectional area, and this way we'll be drawing a picture of the stress. We'll use this other device to measure how much the part stretches. We'll take the change of length and divide by the original two inch length. And that way, we'll be measuring strain. Let's start our experiment and see what the graph looks like. Okay, the stress is starting to rise. The bar is straining. Look at that straight line form. There must be a linear relationship between stress and strain. No, wait, wait, something's happening. It's not a straight line anymore. The stress is going down. No, wait, wait, it's going up again. Uh, now, now it's leveling off. Okay, it looks like it's peaked. Oh, look at the bar. The bar is getting narrower. The stress strain curve is going down. And 
Wow, did you hear that bang? The bar has broken. Well, that was really neat. What we have here is a pretty important diagram. A stress-strain diagram. There are some pretty cool things hiding in this diagram. Let me know if you want to talk about some of them. I'm Bob Welds, and these are Weld Notes.